السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We commence praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, his companions may Allah bless them and bless every one of us and grant us goodness His Excellency the President of this beautiful Republic of the Maldives as well as the dignitaries who are here, the judges, the contestants, my brothers and sisters, I wish you the blessed month of Ramadan, that it is as blessed as ever, the best month from all the months that we have spent so far in our lives. It is indeed the best month of the Islamic calendar, and it is known as the month of the Qur'an. Yes, there are so many things we should be achieving from this beautiful month. Primarily, we achieve taqwa, which is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The softening of the heart is something we should always be achieving in the month of Ramadan. It is known as the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness, the month of closeness to Allah. But it is the month where the Quran was revealed. You and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ Indeed, we have sent down this Qur'an on the night of decree. It is the night when the decree is actually written. It is also known as the night of power. That night which is more powerful than 1,000 months because of the value of the revelation of the Qur'an. When I saw an nur al-Mubin, I felt a calmness in my heart, simply because it is to do with the word of Allah. It is a dream come true for this beautiful nation. When we give importance to the word of Allah, Allah gives importance to us. Remember this. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضَعُ بِهِ آخَرِينَ Allah elevates through this word of His certain people who give it importance, who take it as theirs, who learn it, who put it into practice, who convey it to others, who encourage people to give it importance. And an nurul mubin is one such way that we are encouraging people to value the message of the Qur'an, to perfect its recitation, to make it a part of our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ He addresses all the people, Muslims, non-Muslims, all the people, Allah says, O oh people, indeed a reminder has come to you from your Lord in the form of the Qur'an, in the form of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ From your Lord there is a reminder, which means if I read the Qur'an, there will be in it a reminder for me. To do what? To soften. To soften my heart towards the obedience of Allah. I, I would love to become a person who earns not only this worldly life, but the hereafter as well. And this is why the winner is he who can have a good life here and an even more blessed life in the hereafter. You know the dua mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ From among the people are those, the successful ones, who call out to Allah regarding both this world as well as the next. O oh, our Lord, grant us goodness in this world, goodness in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of hellfire. So this is the balance that we are searching for. We achieve it by listening to the reminder of the Qur'an, by giving it importance. So Allah says, مَوْعِذَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ It has in it cure for the diseases of the heart. When you and I have a sickness, 
it is either spiritual or physical. The spiritual sickness, everybody knows the Quran will cure it because there is a calmness. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, you can hear the recitation of those who participated in this beautiful Quranic contest and Nurul Mubin. Each one is unique. It must have been so difficult for the adjudicators to decide who was first, second, and third, but they had to do it. As difficult as it may have been, because it's the word of Allah, the calmness of every single person's nature is achieved in the Quran. If you hear Sheikh Mahmoud Khalil al husari he recites differently from Sheikh Ali al hudayfi who recites differently from Abdul Rahman al sudais who recites differently from Sheikh Saud al shuraim who recites differently from Sheikh Muhammad Sadiq al-Manshawi, who recites differently from Abdul Basit Abdul Samad, and so on. Why is the recitation different in the way it is delivered? Because it's the beauty of the Quran. Each one of us is calmed by a different reciter. If I ask you today, who is your favorite reader? We will have 100 different names. The reason is, Allah caters for your nature and mine. Allah quenches your spiritual thirst and mine through the recitation of the Quran. Those who believe, they achieve the calmness of the heart through the remembrance of Allah. And the greatest remembrance is the words of Allah, the Quran. You will achieve a calmness just from listening to the Quran. I have come across experiments that have been made in Western countries where they took non-Muslims and they gauged the condition of the heart in its pulse. And they recited or made them listen to the Quran. And you can actually quickly check it on YouTube if you want, the impact or effect of Quranic recitation upon non-Muslims. That was actually done by some young people who decided, let's go and check if it's true. You know, today, mashallah, with social media, everyone is so quick. So they took a phone and they, they took their earphones. They stopped random people in the West and they said, I want you to listen to this and tell me how you feel without telling them what it is. When they listen to it, you can check it. They are calm. They listen. They are so calm. And they say, wow, that was cool. They don't know. Then they were told, this is the Quran. Subhanallah, the Quran. And people are saying it's a book that's supposed to make you hard and harsh. My brothers and sisters, I have a powerful message for you this evening. A true sign of closeness to Allah is the softening of your character. If your character is hard and harsh, you are far from the Quran. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Allah is telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa it is because of the mercy of Allah that you are so lenient towards those around you. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ if you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from, among, from around you. They would not even want to listen to what you have to say. So the softening is the mercy of Allah. It's a sign of closeness to Allah. Those who want to harm others. Today we have an issue across the globe of terrorism. In the name of religion, not just Islam, but Islam is one of those faiths that is being hijacked by people who want to perpetrate crimes, yet... The Quran is the furthest away from that type of teaching. Even if you don't understand it, it will calm you down. So why are the people becoming filled with an inferno? Definitely it is not part of the teaching of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to promote the religion in the most beautiful way. Islam came to this lovely country that is 100% Muslim and to this part of the world in the most peaceful way. Remember that. Today we are completely Muslim. How did it come to us? In a peaceful way. Read your history. You know it better than I do. Let's go to Far East Asia. You will be able to see what happened there. Islam entered through honesty and the character and conduct of the people who visited them. When they dealt in a beautiful way, people said, I want to be like this. 
When we listen to the Quran, when we adopt the Quran, we will be walking Qurans. When Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's character, she did not know what to say. So she said one word, kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His character was the Quran, which means whatever embodiment of the Quran is in this man, you want to know what the Quran is all about? Look at this man. You want to know what this man is all about? Look at the Quran. Subhanallah. And here Allah is saying softening of the heart because my brothers and sisters, you and I know when Allah says there is cure for the diseases of the heart, it's not only spiritual disease. It is also physical disease. You read the Quran, Allah will grant you cure from physical disease. Now, I'm sure we have heard from our scholars that this verse has cure in it. If you want cure, you read this verse or that verse. They would say, read this and that. I always tell people, read the Quran from cover to cover. Why? There are some sicknesses I don't know I have. And there are cures in verses that I don't know where exactly they are, but they are in the Quran. So if I am to pick it up and to take from the cover, putting a marker every day, one verse. How much? One. It's a challenge. My brothers and sisters, I challenge you all. I'm not asking for more. And I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for you. Read one verse. Read one verse of the Quran. Your life will change. I swear by Allah, your life will change. Learn to look after the Quran. Allah will look after you. Listen to the verse. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. Allah says, we have revealed this Quran, this reminder, this revelation. We will protect it. From what? Everything. We will protect it. Many of us, when we read this verse, we look at it and we say, that means Allah will preserve the Quran. It is in its original form. It is authentic. It is legitimate, etc., etc. That is only 1% of the meaning, by the way. There is 99% that we have slipped. We have forgotten. No one's drawn our attention to it. Anyone who gives importance to the Quran, anyone who memorizes a verse, anyone who memorizes a surah, and I know 100% of us seated here, we know Surah Al-Fatiha off by heart. Am I right? Subhanallah. 100% of us have made an effort. We learned a surah. We know Surah Al-Ikhlas. Maybe we know Surah Al-Kawthar. We know a few. We are expanding every day. Ayatul Kursi, we know. These are verses of the Quran. Each verse is more valuable than the most expensive diamond on earth. If you have it in your heart, Allah says, I will protect you. I will protect you because I promised I'm going to protect the Quran. If you made an effort to look after it, I have to look after you because you have it now in your heart. When a person has the most valuable diamond in his hand and he walks on the street, the jeweler will come to him and say, come here, wait, walk with all these bodyguards, subhanallah, because you know what you have in your hand. You are in danger. Subhanallah, we need to look after you from those devilish people who might come and pinch. They might even kill you as a result. Wallahi, the Quran is more valuable. Allah says, wait, we will protect you. We will send angels to look after you. We will make sure that you are walking calm. You are relaxed. You might have challenges, but you will be content. When we have challenges in our lives, that's the promise of Allah. You will have a challenge. Every day you will have a new challenge. The most beloved unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad peace be upon him, had the biggest challenges. He lost his father prior to birth. He lost his mother. He was born an orphan. He grew up. He lost the uncle who was looking after him. Later on, sorry, he lost the, the grandfather who was looking after him. Later on, he continued and the people belied him one after the other. They, when he went to Ta'if, you know what happened in Mecca, what happened. Then when he went to Medina, the, the, the wars one after the other against who? The best of creation, the most noble of all prophets. He lost all his children in his lifetime besides one. All his children passed away in his lifetime. The boys passed away when they were small. The girls passed away when they were old. Why did Allah do this to the most beloved, the most loved? To calm you and I down to say, Inna lillah, 
wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah. We have to go back to Him. How many of us want paradise? All of us. Well, to go to paradise, unfortunately or fortunately, you need to pass away. Who wants to die? No one. So how are you going to go to paradise? Subhanallah. So Allah says, when you're ready, I'm going to take you away. And I'm not going to give you a choice because I love you more than you love yourself. That's Allah. Be calm, be happy. Allah will grant it to you. So Allah says, we are taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayatul kursi, the reading of that one verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, subhanallah. You read it, automatically you are protected. You read Surah Al-Fatiha, there is protection. Why? Because Allah says, we reveal this Quran, we will protect it. So a hafiz of the Quran is protected by Allah with bodyguards we cannot see because he has with him something that is more valuable than the most valuable items present on this earth. The same applies when you make an effort to learn one verse. I promise you, I have had people come back to me and say, Sheikh, you know what? We try to memorize. I'm not strong at reading Quran, but I listen and I try to repeat, repeat a few times only with the intention. I want to please Allah. This is his word, even though I don't understand so much, but it's the best word, the word of Allah. And I try to memorize one verse every week. And wallahi, you are so true. I am content. I have so many problems, but I'm a happy person. People ask when you have problems, how do I know? Is it a punishment of Allah or a test of Allah? This is the month of Ramadan, right? A lot of the wars took place. The month of Ramadan, the battle of Badr took place. Month of Ramadan. The answer is, it's in the condition of your heart, not in what is happening to you. Anything can happen to you. If your heart is cool and calm, it's a gift of Allah. It's a test from Allah. Elevation of your status. But if your heart is not calm, you are angry, you are upset, you get absolutely absurd and you are so depressed, that is a sign that perhaps you need to increase in your link with Allah, develop it further. So my brothers and sisters, the heart, the diseases of the heart, where is the cure? In the Quran. Not just the spiritual disease, but also the physical diseases. Remember this, the blessed month of Ramadan, we are given it as a gift. As soon as the moon is sighted, what happens? We move into a new mode. There is a feeling. It's called a rohaniya. You know, it's called a spirituality of this month that we feel in it because of the blessings that Allah has placed in the beautiful month of Ramadan. It's, no, it's the month where we are supposed to be abstaining from food and drink, etc., etc., and also from bad words. Because the Quran teaches us development of character, development of conduct, development of wisdom. We need to be able to have tact when we address one another. We need to be conscious of the feelings of one another. When you talk to someone, speak to them considering how they will take what you have said. This is why the Prophet ﷺ tells us the way you word your speech could actually be rewarding or sinful, even though the message is the same. When you belittle someone, you are sinful. When you give them importance, definitely you will be given importance to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give people importance, no matter who they are. Greet them, smile at them, talk to them in a way that they feel that there is hope. Unfortunately, when we talk of the Quran, my brothers and sisters, we usually doom people. We usually give a message such that everyone is going to Jahannam. I always ask the brothers who say this, brother, if everyone is going to Jahannam, why did Allah make Jannah? For what? There is no one there besides you. Allahu Akbar. May Allah take us all to Jannah to Firdaus. Brothers and sisters, what a lovely month. I have given you only a small introduction to this beautiful month of Ramadan, a few points of benefit, and I have made a challenge out to yourselves and myself to read one verse a day for the sake of Allah. One verse a day. If you have done more, you can do more. Inshallah, you expand according to your capacity. But no one has an excuse to go below one. No one. Start your day with it, with the word of Allah. And I promise you, your life will change. You will achieve the greatness and goodness of this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open for you the doors of Jannatul Firdaus. Imagine 
being resurrected and called out on the day of judgment, called out on the day of judgment to come to a special gathering with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that day would be the day we would be proud of our achievement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us all with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the akhirah. May Allah give us Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep an Nurul Mubin running and alive as a sadaqa jariya for those who have established it until we get to Jannatul Firdaus and we see the effort we have made for the Quran. And we are really happy that Allah has protected us not just in this world, but even on the day of Qiyamah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum.